been in the past. Yes! We're still traveling through history. And where have we landed now? Even further, it seems. For, for this is a king's court. Now I warn you, not all periods of history were equally fair to the fairer sex. <laughs> oh, I can hear a plaintiff comes with a plea for the king. I shall sit amongst you and we shall watch it unfold. <laughs> Advance no further. I am here to speak with the king. My liege. I have come to discuss with you the presence in our books of a certain law. The one about the land and my not owning any because of my lady parts. This issue was of no consequence until just this afternoon. For you see, my cousin has asked me to marry him. <laughs> Interesting, I was certain that would elicit some sort of negative response from the court, or perhaps a response at all, but really, no. <laughs> you all have entered into contractual marriages with your cousins. Okay? <laughs> well, perhaps this is the wrong court to address, however, I am here now, and I do not want to, and the only reason that I am required to is because of this stupid law. I apologize for emoting so strongly. However, I simply can bear it no more. For you see, my cousin has informed me that he has the capability of throwing me out of my own home, of my father's own home. And all because my mother never bore a son. She would, what she could have, for you see, she died in childbirth. I know, I know, who among us does not have a mother who died in childbirth. However, <laughs> I digress. I do not want to marry my cousin. Ponder this next query, and no blaspheming meant, my lord, but uh, could I not simply inherit the land myself? <laughs> For you see, I have a case to plead. Uh, women often excel at crafts, yes. Why, I could tend to my land as I tend to my sewing. Why, my babbling brook looks just like a ribbon. If you squint her eyes, <coughs> like this with the ribbon, <laughs> and the ribbon happens to be blue and hue. <laughs> I don't want to marry my cousin, and I shall do anything. <laughs> my lord, I realize that this is a tall order, as your eyes are very crossed. However, just one at me, just one eye contact, oh. just right at me. So, what is captivating that left one, though? <laughs> it is a portrait of your parents, is it not? Yes. <coughs> they were cousins. <laughs> All right, I shall show myself to the stocks. I know where they are. <laughs> oh, but first, uh, um, I have crafted you something. It is nothing, really. It is simply a treaty. I, it's for that uh, parcel of land whose name I am forbidden to speak, Spain. <laughs> I thought you could show it to France. No, don't have me thrown out again! My lord, please, ouch! Rocks still hurt! The year is 1077. This is a castle that stands on the Italian side of the Alps. Here resides Gregory VII, Pope. Eight months ago, Gregory excommunicated Henry IV, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Germany, which has dealt a severe blow to Henry's power, because all the laws of vassalage and fealty are based on Christendom, of which Henry is no longer a part anymore. 
The Pope has promised a council in one month to consider Henry's position. But unbeknownst to the Pope, Henry has crossed the Alps with a small band of retainers and even now approaches the castle barefoot, wearing a horsehair shirt and much penitent. Your Holiness, it is I, Henry the Fourth, King and Emperor. I come to you asking your forgiveness. Please, open your gates and grant me clemency. What might look to most as abject surrender is actually the unfolding of a plot most canny. <laughs> I sins of Wait, I'm explaining! Oh, sorry, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> For what Christian, let alone the Vicar of Christ, could dare refuse forgiveness? For so penitent, abject, and miserable a soul. Now? Yes. My sins, unshriven, <laughs> torture me like an icy winter's night. Please, find it in the, your father, our father's soul, to open your gates and grant me absolution. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> well, we all know what happened next. Pope Gregory the Seventh gave absolution to Henry, reluctantly, but gave it absolution. He got his power back, and three years later, when the Pope would try to excommunicate Henry again, circumstances would be very different. Henry would name his own Pope and lay siege to Rome, striking a blow for the separation of church and state, a divide that would grow over the centuries until it manifested in its ultimate form, the Constitution of the United States of America. Ah, the gates have opened! My repentance is at hand! But one has to wonder. What if things had gone differently? What if Pope Gregory VII had been an ostrich? Your Holiness, I beseech you. I come to you on bended knee. God is a king. God, ow, ow. Your Majesty, your Majesty, I, I wanted to talk to you about the small matter of my out, my eternal soul. Your out, your feathers look amazing, Majesty. Your beak. Henry the Fourth would survive his savage pecking and return to Germany. <laughs> A month later, Pope Gregory would give him absolution, but it would be too late. His power would crumble, and the Pope would have established that he has the power to dethrone secular princes. A dangerous precedent, which would lead to an unparalleled. Back off. Get back. Get